The Skaven box came with a pretty cool looking rattling warp blaster, but I decided that I wanted to change it up a bit to make it fit into my clan scurvy army. The idea I had was to make this into some fast water vehicle, and to do that I knew that I was going to have to make some drastic changes. I have a couple of random bits boxes, so I scavenged through them to look for something that would fit the pirate look. I find a few bits that will fit perfectly, but first I gotta make a big cut to the model. To make this into a water vehicle, the clan rats unfortunately needed to go, but I'm sure I'll be able to put them to good use later on down the line. I removed the small back wheels because it's the perfect spot for this empire cannon, or I think maybe it's a dwarf cannon, but anyway, this is going to be what propels the warp blaster through the water. Of course I was going to have to add some warp stone smoke shooting out from it, and I found this bit from my skaven box, and it fitted perfectly. I clip it down to fit the barrel of the cannon and it's good to go. I always wanted a Skaven bird hybrid, so I took this bird from the Stormcast half of the Vermintide box and I clipped his head off, then I clipped off the head of a giant rat and I was just about able to cut it perfectly so I wouldn't have to add some green stuff filler onto it. I had this mad idea of adding a little fisher rat somewhere. So I took this little guy from the Plague Monks and I was struggling to find a piece I could use for his fishing line. I then remembered I had this garden wire stuff and when I removed the rubber part I was left with this tin wire I could work with. I then took a little fish from a set I had from Green Stuff World and added it onto the line. It was then time to add everything on. I glued up the back frame and I held the cannon there until it was at the right angle. I glue a rock onto the front of the warp blaster to give it a nice angle and I found this perfect bit that was from the corpse cart to fit onto the side. I glue on some war trophies and I cut some barrels to make them look like they were going to be floating in the water. The cannon needed a power cable from the power source in the back so I shaped some wire, drilled a small hole and glued both ends in. A final touch of a banner from the doom wheel kit and this conversion was finished. I was happy how it turned out, but now it was time to get painting. I usually like to start off with the clothes, but with this being such a big part of the model, I decided to go with the wood first and I painted it bane blade brown. I thought that was going to be the trickiest part, but I didn't realise all the small in between parts of the metal, but I managed to paint through it without getting too much of a mess onto the wooden parts with lead belcher and rune lord brass. Now it was time to paint the clothes with Averlin Sunset. I also paint the fishing rat and the banner with the same colour. For the rider skin, I've been using Nightquester flesh a lot lately, so I'm sticking with it on this guy. For the fur, I went simply with Dawnstone. When it came to painting the armour, I didn't want to use the usual silver colour, because there was so much silver already on the model. Another thing was that the Claw Lord is going to be painted next, and I wanted his armour to stand out a bit more, so I went with the bold decision to try Calgar Blue this time. To finish off the base coats, I used Doombull Brown on the leather helmet. Next was my favourite part that really brings all the painted parts together, the shading, and I start off with Agrax Earthshade on the wood and on the bronze. For the silver parts on the leather, I go with Nullin Oil. Seraphim Sepia was then used to shade all over the Averland Sunset parts. Smaller parts like the skin and the fur were then shaded with Reikland Flesh Shade and Skeleton Horde. I was a bit unsure about the blue, because I haven't shaded blue in a while and I didn't want it to be too dark, so I went with Drakenhof Nightshade. It was time for the finishing touches and to start off I went with a light brown colour of Balor Brown and I dry brushed it onto the wooden parts. I did the same with all the metal parts with Stormhole Silver and I tried a different dry brush this time, it was almost like a makeup brush. It came out ok, but I went back again with my normal flatter dry brush after. The yellow was then edge highlighted with Uriel Yellow. I then went back to the base colours with Nightquester Flesh on the skin and Dawnstone on the fur. I wanted the edges of the blue armour to be bright, so I picked Fenrisian Grey for the edge highlights. The final touch then was Scrag Brown on the leather. There was plenty of extra bits added on at the end, like the two heads on the side. 
I painted the Stormcast helmet with Korax white and gave it a shade of Apothecary white and the Ogre head with Cadian flesh tone and a shade of Gulliman flesh. The barrels on the base were painted with Gortor brown, then shaded with Agrax Earthshade and the rocks were then painted with Mechanica Standard Grey, Agrax Earthshade and then dry brushed with Dawnstone. I added this nice piece that I think came from the corpse cart and I wanted it to have a faded look so I just used contrast paints Gullum and Flesh, Skeleton Horde and Antonian Camo Shade. The power cables and the smoke from the cannon were then painted by using 2-3 layers of Tesseract Glow. I wanted the rat bird to be brighter than everything else so I went with the red colours of Mephiston Red, Wild Rider Red and then Squig Orange. Then I shaded it with Carburg Crimson and dry brushed some Squig Orange onto the edges. And then came the water base. The first thing I do is paint the base with a light blue and then I crack open this pot of AK water gel. This one is specific blue but there are a few more different kind of shades available and I just start blobbing this stuff on because the more you have the better it is to shape later on. After about a half hour to an hour the gel starts to dry slightly and this is time to start shaping it like waves. And the tool I use for this is a simple pen with the ink ends removed. Then I blow bursts of air onto the gel to try and make it look like waves. This would probably be a lot easier with an airbrush but a pen or a straw does the job. I leave it overnight to harden and then it's time to add the details of the waves. Once dry the next step is to add AK water gel effects and what this does is that it texturizes the gel to give it a rougher look on the waves. The final part to add then is the AK water foam and this is what makes the foams of the water appear. Now as I'm doing this I'm starting to notice that it's not really looking like waves but more like ice and snow. When I added the water gel I don't think I did a good job of shaping the water. I had only done this in small patches on smaller bases and I could get away with it that way. But you know what? We're hobbyists and what we do is try something new. If it works, great. If not, we learn from the experience and get better at it next time. To try and fix it, I start dry brushing Calgar blue on to make it more like water and then I dry brush some white scar over the top. At this point the model was done but I kept thinking there was something missing. The model looked too clean and I knew the perfect thing to really make it rougher, rise the rust. I dry brush it on all the metal parts because no way was anything built by Skaven going to be truly water resistant. I then use a heavily diluted null and oil to tone it back down a bit. The war blaster is finally ready to take to the seas and overall I'm happy how it turned out. The water base didn't quite go as planned but now I know what I need to do for the next time I try it. I had a blast converting this up and it's not going to be too long before I have another conversion video on the channel soon. But if you guys like this video make sure to let me know in the comments section below, hit the like button, subscribe if you haven't and once again thanks for watching.